with Shaken Bacon. In today's video, I'm going to discuss some interesting news in the carnivore world. There's been a study that was just published by Harvard University. The interesting thing about this study is it's the first study that's ever been done on the zero carb carnivore diet. So this way of eating has been around for decades. Some people have even been doing this for decades. There's been uh, some bodybuilders in the past who've been doing this since the 50s. There's been people who have been doing this way of eating for a couple decades and where they literally only have a steak a day, a big steak a day, but like just red meat. And sometimes they don't even have salt in their diet. So uh, I'm having salt in mine. And I might eventually cut that out, maybe for like a one month challenge in January. So anyway, it's quite fascinating because what's happening is doctors have always said, my own doctor included, there's not only any long-term studies done on this, there's no short-term studies. So we don't know the consequences of doing something like this, good or bad. And my argument to that is, you know, for lots of these people, we know that they weren't getting good results in the direction they were going in with whatever way of eating they were doing. And if people can do something like this and they find it sustainable and it's giving them all sorts of health benefits where their health problems are going away. And in my case, we look at how my health problems have gone away. And also it shows in my blood work that my health problems have been getting better. Then it's something to at least take notice of. So the study came out from Harvard University. It's a questionnaire that was, was done and over 2000 people though, and people who have been doing this uh, way of eating for quite a while. And um, we'll get into the information in it. And it's, it's nice because it's offering people nugget of research that they can build upon. So this is the type of study that is like an epidemiology study. They're going to look at the information, make some correlations, and now the scientists will have something to try and work with to prove or disprove. So when, just say, 80% of the people say they went off their diabetes medication or went to a very weak dose of diabetes medication, they can look now and say, okay, let's look at this group and let's see how this diet fares with a controlled study. And that's what we really are always interested in is those top quality controlled studies. They're smaller, they won't be able to do it with 2000 people, but this has now given scientists a framework to start working off of. And in this questionnaire that was handed out to over 2000 participants uh, over uh, an extended period, we see that the results they got were very beneficial. It was mainly good results. Some people, a small percentage of people, it didn't work out well for it but the vast majority of people got some pretty good results doing it. it. was also a reputable university that did this. So that goes a long way for people. So this is the kind of thing when your doctors or uh, more importantly, friends or family start giving you trouble for doing a way of eating like this, that seems quite frankly out there and a little odd. You can actually say, you know, a study was just done on this and it was actually a very positive study uh, as far as the results go. And it goes against everything the doctors thought they knew and they're really intrigued by this at this point. So um, people like to throw their opinions around and everybody becomes a nutritional consultant when it comes to learning about keto or carnivores, low carb or zero carb ways of eating. And it's a shame because uh, there's, no, there's no real serious health problems that most people get doing this. It tends to help most people. And they didn't mind, like, you know, I ballooned up to 450 pounds. I was a big guy. And people weren't saying anything to me when I was having ice cream or pizza in large quantities. They just watched me do it and say, oh, you know, this is his choice. You know, he's got a problem. And, you know, it's, you know, it's just the way it is. But the minute you're doing something that's making you feel good, that's when everyone stops and goes, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This isn't a good idea uh, because there's no scientific reference for anybody. So it's really encouraging to see that finally there is something that was going in this direction towards a carnivore study. And we'll get into the information now. And behavioral characteristics and self-reported health status among 2,029 adults consuming a carnivore diet. It goes into the background, uh, how it's really not a studied way of eating. A carnivore diet based on animal foods and excluding most or all plant foods has attracted recent popular attention. However, Little is known about the health effects and tolerability of this diet, and concerns for nutrient deficiencies and cardiovascular disease risk have been raised. So those are very valid points. I mean, we do not want to put people at risk 
uh, anyone who's eating this way. Uh, we don't want to make any health conditions worse. And if for some reason it is making it worse for somebody, they need to stop and reassess if this is working for them. As I'm doing this, I'm monitoring my body fat, my lean muscle and bone density, blood work. And if any of this starts going in a really negative way and continues to get worse and worse and worse, then I have to really reassess what I'm doing and try and figure out if this is a good direction for me to go in. Uh, you know, you look at my cholesterol, for example, my cholesterol's high, but if all the other risk factors of heart attack are really low, then that's not an issue. Any cardiologist or specialist or doctor will tell you that. If you only have one of seven or 10 risk factors of heart disease, even if that's a high one, it's really not that much of an issue. It's something to watch for. It's something to make sure that it's not, it's gonna be worse if you notice a two or three more issues start arising. But for the most part, one thing like just cholesterol isn't an issue, especially when all my, in my case, when all my other health concerns have gone away or they're getting closer and closer to a normal number every month that goes by. The objective, uh, they obtain descriptive data on the nutritional practices and health status of a large group of carnivore diet consumers. Uh, the methods. A social media survey was conducted March 30th to June 24th, 2020, amongst adults self-identifying as consuming a carnivore diet. The results. So this is the pretty interesting part. A total of 2,029 respondents reported consuming a carnivore diet for 14 months, motivated primarily by health reasons. Red meat consumption was reported greater than daily by 85%. Under 10% reported consuming vegetables, fruits or grains or monthly, and 37% denied vitamin supplement use. Prevalence of adverse symptoms was low, below 1% to 5.5%. Symptoms included gastrointestinal, muscular, and dermatologic conditions. Participants reported high levels of satisfaction and improvements in overall health. 95%, that's pretty amazing. Well-being, 69 to 91%. Various medical conditions and BMI among a, subs a subset reporting current lipids, LDL cholesterol was marked elevated. Now that's pretty common when you become fat adapted. Whereas HDL cholesterol and triglycerides were optimal. And that's what we're noticing with my blood work. So. Uh, I have high overall cholesterol, especially LDL cholesterol. My HDL is normal and my triglycerides are normal as well. So I'm kind of in this uh, typical group here of what typically happens with people who are following a carnivore diet. Participants with diabetes reported benefits including reduction in BMI and diabetes medication use. Um, so 84 to 100%. So th this is pretty substantial. So conclusions, contrary to common expectations, adults consuming a carnivore diet experienced few adverse effects and instead reported health benefits and high sat satisfaction. Cardiovascular risk factors were variably affected. The generalizability of these findings and the long-term effects of this diet pattern require further study. The summary, in a survey of over 2000 adults following a carnivore diet, for example, one that aims to avoid plant food, health benefits and satisfaction were generally reported. So a long story short, this is what most carnivores go through. Their blood work gets better, they lose weight, their energy's better. Uh, people who are pre-diabetic or diabetic like myself go off their medications. It's really encouraging to see that this is a good first step in a positive direction done by a reputable university, uh, done with a respectable amount of people and people who have these health problems. So at this point, it would be nice if they can start doing some actual proper studies to try and prove or disprove different theories around a carnivore diet. You know, maybe this has been done, these studies have been done in other parts of the world, but in America, North America, this is a new thing, uh, this type of study. So it's nice to be able to show people, including your family and doctors, this is what actually the scientists are showing right now as far as research goes on a carnivore study. And when people have criticisms and real negative attitudes towards this, uh, it's nice to have something that you can point out to them and say, hey, you know, there's actually good results with this.
Uh, so, and it even surprised the doctors that were doing the study. I've said before, it's sometimes not worth telling people what type of eating you're doing and maybe just explain, dumbing it down and saying you're doing an elimination diet temporarily because people can wrap their minds around that. But now at least when you're explaining this and people ask questions uh, and they, they're concerned, maybe genuinely concerned or maybe they're just being a little obnoxious about it, you can provide this information for them. Anyway, it's been nice that this information has finally come to light. Uh, this is the first step in a good direction for the nutrition science. And unfortunately, it's weird that it's taken so long for something like this to have actually been done properly by, uh, by a major university. So you would think this is something that they would have figured out in the 50s or 60s or even in the 2000s, early 2000s, but better late than never. Uh, thanks for listening. I always try and have these videos ready for Sunday mornings at 8.30 and Thursday mornings at 8.30. So I try and keep them short so it doesn't eat into your day too much. So I hope the format's okay. I hope you find these enjoyable and educational and entertaining. Uh, I know they can be a little dry sometimes, but if you're into this sort of thing, you're probably hang off my every word. So anyway, take care. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or hit the little bell notification or give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment. You know, if you have any questions, I'd like to answer them. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know. All right. Take care.